22-0, a national championship, and three wins over Boston College, the 2022 North Carolina women's lacrosse team really did have a perfect season, but they almost did it. Flashback to the fourth quarter of UNC's semifinal matchup with Northwestern. The Tar Heels were trailing 14-7 and needed eight goals in less than 10 minutes to win in regulation and keep their undefeated season alive. The odds were certainly stacked against them. But that's when the Heels dug deep into their bag of what Deemer Class calls championship plays. I think championship plays are when, one, your star players really come out and make big time plays at big time moments. I think championship plays can be the hidden plays, the hustle plays. Sometimes it might come from the star, but sometimes it might come from a role player on that team. I think there's really a combination of a few different ones. And I think when you're trying to complete a huge comeback, I think you have to string a lot of them in a row from goalie to D to midfield to attack. North Carolina needed a ton of championship plays in the fourth quarter of this game, and we'll cover all of them in this video. But let's start with the play that originally sparked UNC's comeback, which came on the stick of sophomore attacker Caitlin Wurzberger. Wurzberger here does a great job showing why she was the number one recruit a couple years ago, picking up the ball off the end line and taking a hard 1v1 dodge to the rack, turn the corner tough, absorb the contact, finish around the goalie, big time championship play. At this point, the run was on. Once Wurzberger lit the fuse, it didn't take long for her teammates to pour more fuel on the fire, starting with two-time to Wharton Award finalist, Jamie Ortega. So as we check the timestamps here, just under a minute later, Ortega, same idea coming from the left side, getting top side to her left hand, using her speed. She does a great job of knifing her shoulder and running through the head of the stick. Again, these are the plays that a team needs to chip away and make a big comeback. In the final six minutes of this game, something incredible happened as grad student Sam Geiersbach went absolutely bonkers and scored five of UNC's last six goals. We'll get to Gar's box heroics, but before we do, let's shed a light on some of those hidden plays Deemer mentioned earlier. One of them was this opportunistic double team on defense, which led to a tangible shift in momentum. This play was huge on a couple different reasons. One, this is a great example of an opportunistic double from All-American defender Emma Trenchard. She does a great job of sending a double team to the back of Lauren Gilbert. The other reason I think this was such a huge pivotal play was the tough ground ball ends up drawing a card. And so this put Northwestern at three cards, gives UNC a woman up opportunity. They're building momentum, making the tough plays and really continuing to spark that comeback. The Tar Heels forced eight Northwestern turnovers in the fourth quarter while committing just two themselves. Some of them were thanks to timely double teams, but others were pure hustle plays like this perfect ride back from Wurzberger. If I were to show any of my athletes what epitomizes a championship play, this ride back by Caitlin Wurzberger would be it. She's patient on the check. She makes sure to close the gap and to get the check in a way that doesn't draw a foul. This is a big time, big time play. Takeaways weren't the only way UNC created extra possessions. Andy Aldave, a grad transfer from Notre Dame, played such a crucial role on the draw that her efforts were arguably just as integral to the comeback as Geiersbach's goals. A few draws might have been more important to UNC's comeback than this one here by Andy Aldave. This was a great job of getting the second ball, you know, the ball that is missed by the circle players and then bounces up and then she's able to win possession. Three minutes left with a 90 second shot clock. Again, a crucial draw victory. UNC controlled six out of seven draws at one point in the fourth quarter and Aldave was responsible for winning four of them. One of those draw controls led directly to a possession that yielded Geiersbach's game-tying goal. In the second half, this comeback was really sparked by the individual efforts of Sam Geiersbach. She dominated her individual matchups and she was just able to get to the net. This is a great example of a double rollback on the initial split underneath. Northwestern defender does a nice job of taking that away and closing space, but then to roll back to her strength, this was a huge goal, two minutes, 20 five seconds left and now this game is starting over at zero zero 
Although Northwestern won the ensuing draw and called a timeout, when play resumed, North Carolina again looked like the hungrier team with another cause turnover on an aggressive ride back. And once the ball was settled in UNC's offensive end, the stage was set for Garsbach to effectively call game. I think here you see them get into a zone that is probably a little too soft given the point in the game. This also speaks to Geiersbach's recognition to catch, set up her left to left dodge and really attack the approach here, turn the corner and get to the net. Having the confidence to take this shot, Geiersbach really went crazy down the stretch. One last clutch save from goalie Taylor Marino against Lauren Gilbert, who led Northwestern with five goals in this game, and the comeback was finally complete. Raw emotions poured forth from head coach Jenny Levy's team as over 7,600 fans in attendance at Homewood Field tried to comprehend what they had just witnessed. But North Carolina's job wasn't done. In order for those fourth quarter moments to truly count as championship plays, the Heels had to take care of business in the title game. That meant taking down the reigning national champs, Boston College. They say it's tough to beat a team three times in a single season, but after beating BC once in the regular season and again in the ACC tournament, that's exactly what UNC did with its 12 to 11 win in the national championship. I think this was a really resilient group to put all that energy into making and then completing the comeback, regroup, and then get ready for Sunday. Playing two games in three days is never an easy task, but that's what you have to do to win championships. The North Carolina women's lacrosse team achieved perfection in 2022, and it wouldn't have been possible without the players who stepped up and made championship plays when the team needed the most.